The situational syncope is um, when a patient uh, faints in response to a specific trigger or a situation. So for example, the most common uh, situational syncope that I come across uh, would be uh, syncope following micturition, which is going for a wee. And so the common scenario is uh, a patient who gets up in the middle of the night, walks to the toilet and has a pee, and as they're standing up, or, or, or as the patient is standing up from the toilet or turning around to walk back to the bed, it's a bit dark, the conditions are right, they have a fall and they have syncope. So that's one example of situational syncope. And of course, there are other triggers or other situations that can uh, provoke uh, syncope, such as syncope on swallowing, syncope on coughing, uh, syncope um, after um, a prolonged uh, straining, for example, on a toilet or weight lifting. And these are specific situations that cause a syncope. Situational syncope, um, the underlying pathophysiological mechanisms, that is to say the reasons why you might faint in a situation, is different for every specific situation. Of course, a, a reason might be faint, and so the kind of pain response one might get, for example, very commonly when you're giving blood or having blood taken, or the sight of a needle uh, is enough to frighten your system into shutting down. That's akin, for example, to a possum playing dead, or you know, a, a situation where um, a reflex is evoked in the system, which shuts the system down. When I say the system, I mean the blood pressure and the heart rate can drop to the extent a patient loses consciousness in specific situations. The other aspect of situational syncope, in addition to pain, might be an acute change in uh, the blood pressure. For example, as a result of uh, a very explosive cough, so when you have a coughing fit, um, you understand that the, in the chest wall, the lungs and the heart share the same fixed cavity. And as you increase the pressure within the lungs to generate, if you like, more space, you're squishing the veins uh, that return the blood supply to the heart. And therefore, venous return into the heart is reduced. Therefore, the heart is beating on an empty chamber. So the cardiac output or the blood pressure goes down and that's how a patient might faint as well. Of course that's a very simplistic way to think about it but these are some of the examples of, a, of the mechanisms that may drive syncope. So situational syncope is diagnosed um, principally on the history and if you take a really good history spend 10 minutes uh, with a patient asking about all the factors preceding uh, each syncopal um, episode, um, you will often arrive at the diagnosis of a situation that triggers syncope, so a cause. Um, if there is any doubt, then patients can be put on a tilt table test, and for example at Imperial, where we're doing a study on patients with cough syncope, whilst patients are on the tilt table, um, we uh, then ask them to reproduce the specific triggers. For example, we'll ask the patient to cough or have an active coughing fit to see whether we can track any reduction in the blood pressure or heart rate that may accompany that and whether we can cause the patients to reproduce their, simple, their, their symptoms on the tilt. Um, we've done the same for patients, for example, referred to us for swallow syncope. So they, all patients referred to Imperial for a tilt table test uh, will have a history taken and where there is a definite cause or situation that triggers the syncope, uh, we will do our best to try and uh, reproduce the situation, whether it's getting a patient to swallow a last glass of, large glass of water or to cough on the tilt. And that can be a useful way to also make a, or firm up the diagnosis of a situational syncope.